Hello everybody, welcome back to this retrospective series on the Primarchs and their legions. I am the Darklight Emissary, and I am here to guide you through a bit about each of these legions and what you can expect from them if you're new, and some speculation and a touch of deeper lore speculation from me if you are not so new to this setting. So this episode is on the 5th Legion, the White Scars Legion, and the Khan of Khans, Jagate Khan, their Primarch. Now, uh, this Legion uh, started off with not too much known about them, other than uh, that they remained loyalist and helped uh, guard the Imperial Palace during the Siege of Terra. Uh, since that laying of the groundwork. Um, we have had several books with them, and they have become, I would say, one of the favorites of many people because uh, the personality of the Khan and his men are uh, have brought some of the best characters uh, into the setting, fleshed out like Yasugi, the Psyker uh, librarian of the um, White Scars, an amazing character, or Shiban Khan, also an amazing character, and I'll speak a bit about them a little bit later. But let's focus first on this Legion as a whole. So the White Scars Legion is known for lightning attack uh, patterns and strategy. So they kind of take a, uh, they're a bit of a nod to the um, old fighting of uh, Genghis Khan and the Mongolian hordes um, of Old Earth. They uh, will come in and strike on speeder bikes and other fast attack type of things and dash in, do a bunch of damage, and dash out and get out. If they do get into a running ground battle, they're still their objective is to move fast and be faster than their enemy and hit them before they can even see what is coming. And they are known for being a very independent legion. They spent a lot of time away from the rest of the Imperium, and that is partially because Jagata Khan uh, was not very interested in the Imperium. He did not like the Emperor very much, and he did not like the Imperium that much. However, I think he saw protracting the Great Crusade and staying on the Emperor's side as a overall benefit to humanity, so he was willing to go along with it more than any sort of loyalty to the Emperor like Rogal Dorn or Robout Goleman, as two other Primarch examples, kind of known for really believing in the Emperor's plans. I don't think Jagatai had much faith in it, but Jagatai Khan is proven through the times we get to see him as a very pragmatic and very, very smart, unemotional leader. Um, he has emotion and he cares a lot about his men and even a lot of humans underneath his command. One of his greatest advisors is an is a older woman, just regular woman, um, who helps uh, run his legion, and he takes her advice very seriously. Uh, and I would say a few of the better legions to ever choose to live with or become part of uh, would be the ones that treat regular humans with a deference and respect of, you know, being who they serve as legionaries. Whereas a lot of the fallen legions to chaos and some of the loyalists kind of view humanity as a whole as a lesser than them, even though they are derived from humanity and are there to help humanity. Um, I think a lot of the traitors believed that they were there to replace humanity eventually. Uh, they did not believe in simply being the people meant to shovel out all the trash just for a bunch of what they saw it as freeloaders to come take it all over. That's part of why the traders, you know, betrayed other than chaos getting their hands uh, in the pot there. But anyway, uh, so Jagate Khan ends up choosing to side with the emperor during the Horus Heresy. Now, uh, there was a pot, uh, an almost a giant split in the White Stars Legion. Some of them thought they should follow Horus and thought and then we're getting confused and I don't remember specifics right now, but Jagate Khan was not there at the time and eventually he shows up and he 
basically, I think he executes one of the would-be traitors, and the rest fall back in line, and his legion stays intact. Um, and uh, the Khan is, as I said, he's very pragmatic. He isn't given over to emotion, um, emotional decisions very easily. Uh, he tends to try to weigh decisions based upon the knowledge he has versus an emotional response. Um, a great example of this is uh, Jagatai was um, a uh, he was a believer in psychers and librarians, uh, the uh, space marines with psychic ability, um, and he had a librarius in his legion. Um, there was a meeting of the minds called the Council of Nicaea, where the emperor outlawed librarius and the legions, um, and. Shikata Khan did not follow that order. He kept Yasugi and the rest of his legionaries that were psychers um, available because he knew they were important. And he made that judgment call as leader of his legion. Whereas you've got people like Rogal Dorn who sealed away all of his librarians basically in a vault and did not let them out for years until uh, things were obvious that they needed psyker help. And so, with that in mind, uh, Jagate Khan, I think he considered Magnus the Red, the Primarch of the Thousand Suns Legion, as a friend. And during the course of the heresy, uh, as we will talk about when we get to those legions, Magnus the Red's legion was wiped from the board by Lemon Roos and the Space Wolves Legion, along with the Adeptus Custodes, Silent Sisterhood, and Sinister Ordo Legions of Titans that went there and ravaged Prospero in the city of Tisca, and Magnus was pushed into a corner and was banished into the war uh, to save what was left of his legion. And Jakarta Khan went there and uh, went to the husk that was Prospero, what was left of it, and he found a single uh, space marine left alive from the legion named Arvida. And uh, it, had this been any of the other loyalist legions, they might have just executed Arveda because the Thousand Sons were considered traitors. But Jakarta Khan was able to uh, take a more pragmatic approach and not execute Arveda. And Arveda ends up becoming one of the main leaders of the Grey Knights chapter of Space Marines. Which, if you know anything about them, they are a highly specialized demon hunting force in the Imperium. And so, it ended up being the right decision. And... You know, had it not been a more level-headed uh, by Mark, um, he would have probably been executed right there simply for wearing the red armor of Prospero still. And likewise, uh, Yasugi had been friends with Ahriman, who was the main librarian of the Thousand Suns. And it's really disappointing that they never got to meet again because I, I feel like if Yasugi would have been able to find Ahriman right after what had happened on Prospero, that maybe Yasugi could have convinced that legion to stay loyal. I don't know if that's the case, but I feel like Jagatai and Yasugi would have had a good shot at it if they would have ran into the Thousand Suns early on in the heresy after that event happened. But that is a what if scenario and it didn't happen, unfortunately. It's a bit of a tragedy there. Now, um, one thing about Jagatai Khan is I consider him one of the best fighters of the Primarchs. He is a consummate swordsman. Um, you will see in some of the artwork of this video, uh, he carries a very large custom-made sword with him, and he knows how to use that thing to extremely deadly precision. Um, I would have loved to see uh, Fulgrim versus Jagate Khan, because so, uh, as far as swordsmen go, Fulgrim is also up there for being known for being a swordsman. And um, it would have been interesting to see those two fight, I think. Uh, we do get to see Jakarta Khan fight during the, the Siege of Terra against um, Mortarion, the Primarch of the Death Guard Legion, in his Demon Prince form. And it is an incredibly brutal fight. Uh, Jakarta Khan wins. He is able to cut the head from Mortarion. And, but if you know anything about Demon Princes, that doesn't kill Mortarion. It just made him banished back to the warp for a time being. Uh, but Jagatai almost died from the effort of that fight. But he did. He is one of the Primarchs that goes down during the Heresy to have defeated another Primarch in single combat. 
Um, not with the death of one, since Mortarion was already beyond mortal constraints, but still a worthy effort by him. His legion fought fiercely during the Siege of Terra. Uh, they are one of the three legions that made it back to the siege in time to fight the traitors. And again, Jagatai is choosing the Loyalist side, not so much because he's a big believer in the Imperium, but because he knows that the alternative is way worse. He could see what Chaos is doing to the traitors, and he knows that's a lost cause. So, you know, he's picking the better of two evils, in his opinion. If you were to ask him, I'm sure he would say that. Uh, now, the, the White Scars are, like I said, they are an incredibly fast-moving and uh, fierce legion in close combat, much like their Khan uh, with his sword fighting. Plenty of the legion also carry swords that are custom-made on Chagoras, where they're from. And uh, those swords are all one-of-a-kind and pass from owner to owner, when a, a legionary dies in battle, it's given to a new uh, owner until their death as well. And these blades are uh, consumably, you know, they're just, they are very powerful weapons of war. And they know how to use them, as well as using speed bikes to hit and run your enemies, uh, as I briefly touched on before. And so during the siege, um, this legion played a pivotal role in hit and run tactics against the traitor forces they would range out on a huge amount of speed bikes and get around enemy traitor forces and smash through their ranks do a ton of damage and then make their way back to loyalist lines uh, they eventually let themselves be cut off from the rest of the loyalist forces uh, to make a dash for the imperial spaceport that was now in the hands of traitors uh, the Lionsgate spaceport where uh, Mortarion was taking control, and that is where Jagate Khan met his brother in single combat and removed Mortarion and his legion largely from the rest of the conflict. Um, so, uh, one of the things I really like about this legion, uh, I'd mentioned Shiban Khan. Um, he is an amazing, uh, one of the amazing leaders in the White Scars, uh, and the White Scars are really. They're, they really show their humanity and how they respect regular humans. Uh, Shaban Khan ends up in a very bad situation where he is behind enemy lines and he is super injured. The list of his injuries is just basically all he feels is pain and he's hallucinating and seeing his dead um, comrades that had gone before him and uh, they're kind of guiding him and giving him, you know, like, but some of them are kind of saying, hey, maybe you should just give up. And, um, and Shaban Khan's like, no, I need to keep going. So amongst his uh, journeys through the ruins of the palace area he was stuck in, he comes across a uh, lone soldier who is holding a baby. And, uh, you know, he allows them to come along with him. And uh, then later on, the man dies in a, in a fight that they run into. And Shaban Khan is left with the infant. And... Shiban Khan does not leave it behind. He cradles the infant in one arm, a cane in the other to support his ravaged body, and they continue on through the ruins. And eventually they make their way to Loyalist Lines. And just imagine the sight of a space marine with a baby uh, coming up across a front line of Imperial Guard troops who are probably wondering if they're seeing things. I mean, just like it just shows the humanity of Shiban Khan and of the Wise Cars. Plenty of Loyalist Space Marines would have never even given the baby a second thought. They are, a lot of them allow themselves to be so removed from the humanity they once came from that this simple act of kindness in this grand conflict would have gone unnoticed, uncared for, and it it just, it, it helps make the White Scars just one of those legions that you could see yourself being part of because of that. And so, it's one of my favorite bits from the Siege of Terra so far. Now, um, after the Siege of Terra and after the traitors are defeated, uh, the White Scars were definitely uh, part of the forefront of the scouring. You can imagine them hit and running and scouring the traitor legions as they made their way towards the Eye of Terror and retreat. And uh, for about 70 years after the um, Siege Jagatai Khan 
uh, was still running as Legion, and he approved of the Codex Astartes by Robot Goleman, which broke up the Legions into chapters of a thousand. And uh, Jagatai, you know, was like, I actually approve of this because I want all of my, you know, my sons to have uh, autonomy on what they do. And that was another sign of Jagatai being a great leader, unlike Perturbo in the last episode. Uh, Jagatai, you know, was one of those better leaders that allowed dissenting opinion from his leaders, you know, went to council with his men and, you know, made proper plans with them. Just because he was the best amongst them, he did not believe that they didn't have anything worthy of his time. He thought the exact opposite of that. And so when the Legion broke up into chapters, Jagatai was all for it and was like, you all, you all basically have grown up. You can leave the house, <laughs> you know, uh, and Jagatai had some of his own plans and things. So he kept, of course, you know, the White Scars chapter with him and uh, helped a lot, uh, you know, the Imperium grow uh, and stabilize after the heresy. Uh, now, eventually, um, Jagatai Khan comes into conflict with a... Uh, Archon of the Dark Eldar. And so if you know anything about the Dark Eldar and an Archon, those are some of the worst forces that you would ever want to see come across you. They are horrifying, uh, terrible creatures, and they are like cockroaches coming out from underneath the fridge, except these cockroaches can drag you back underneath the fridge and then torture you for eternity. So, you know, they're cockroaches that you need to exterminate whenever you see them. And Jakatai Khan felt this way. And so him and his uh, chapter were fighting them and they were pushing towards the Archon and um, Jagata Khan eventually makes it to the webway portal that the Archon is standing in front of. And the Archon retreats back through seeing an angry Primarch coming after him. And Jagata and his uh, first brotherhood are basically the first lead, you know, the first uh, company of the White Scars. I'll go through with him into the webway and then the webway portal shuts and that has been the last time we have seen the con of cons for 10,000 years so in the in the timeline up to 40k uh, he has been missing from his chapter and from you know the, any successor chapters of the white scars uh, it's speculated he's still in the webway um, some fans speculate he could be a disciple of Hegarak, the laughing god of the Eldar, which would be pretty amazing. Imagine seeing Jagata Khan as a, basically, his swordsmanship, but also being, um, also being a, basically a Harlequin. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing to see him come back like that. Uh, and, and this Legion was known for saying, you know, fight while laughing was one of their things. So it kind of could fit with the laughing god idea there. However, uh, that's just a speculation, and no one really knows where the con is in the webway. There's been no whisper or sightings or signs of him, unlike some of the other missing Primarchs in the 40k era. So, uh, it's not speculated he's coming back anytime soon. Um, I'm sure people would like to see him back over some of the more uh, obvious candidates like the Lion or Lemon Roos, but only time will tell. I would like to see the con back. He is a great character, and he would he would come back and be a great welcome, I think, from Robot Goleman, uh, who's bearing the storms alone, and which I'll talk about more in his time on here. But uh, anyway, uh, the White Scars themselves have been fighting valiantly, you know, to, uh, you know, help where they can. Uh, they fight the Tyranids. They absolutely have hate in their souls for the Dark Eldar, so... If they catch wind of the Drukari or Dark Eldar anywhere, they will be there to smash those cockroaches wherever they come out of their little webway portals. So uh, that's a lot of what they do in the modern time. And of course, they are waiting and watching for their lord, the Khan of Khans, to come back and lead them again in a great hunt against the uh, enemies of the Imperium and against humanity, really. I'd call the White Scars and Jagata Khan, Warriors for Humanity of the Imperium. Uh, you know, like I've mentioned several times in this one for them, the Khan is, I think he's more a warrior for humanity. And he saw that humanity would benefit more from the Imperium, even if it wasn't the best form 
over becoming the sock puppets for thirsting gods in an alternate dimension, which he definitely saw happening to the other legions that fell. So that's a bit about the White Scars Legion and Jagate Khan. Um, as always, I don't want to ramble in these. Um, I might deep dive further into these chapters and legions a bit after the series. And so I'll leave you with this here. And uh, please comment if you want to discuss with me on anything. I'd love to do that. And like and subscribe for more. And as always, like into the dark places. Thank you and have a great rest of your day or night.